Hello, I'm Crafty Patty. My last video, I showed you how to make the perfect stones with using the Happy Dotting Company molds. I will leave the link to that video in the description box below, as well as all the supplies I'm going to use in this video. Now, instead of painting your stones in random colors, I'm going to show you how to paint them to match your favorite interior designs. Like, say, new farmhouse. Maybe you like earthy boho. Or maybe you're a shabby chic person. Or whatever your favorite design is, then paint in those colors. Or you can paint your stone with accents of the colors in nature, like this palette. I'll also show you a little design I did in forest blues and greens. And now today, most of the colors in your interior design are a little bit more muted and they're soft. So that's what they're doing now. And so if you paint in these colors, chances are you're going to match a lot of interior designs that are out there right now. In this video, I'm also going to show you how to mix these colors so you can paint your stones to be harmonious and match your interior design or someone else's interior design if you're giving it as a gift. Keep watching and let's get to it. For my dot painting, it's really nice to have some black heavy cardstock where you can go in, you can test out some color palettes that you're working on, you can check out some different designs you're working on, and it's a fun way to practice and sometimes you come up with something really fun. So I wasn't really happy with these colors, and I had remembered that a while back I had gone on to Google or the internet, and I was looking for a chartreuse flower because I was painting for the Global Roots Project and it came up with this one and it came up with the different colors to go together. Remembering that, I thought, yes, it's a good way to go in and figure out what kind of colors go together and use those for your dot painting. So tons of ideas there and I can post some of these on the video for you. If you're not looking for the theme of the actual decor, you can also go into some different things like sea salt, or you could go into some things like that are more bold, like these ones. I am loving these colors, so I think we're going to try to match up these today, and I'll show you how I do that, and this will be our paint palette today. I don't have this exact color, so I tried to find a blue that was the closest that I could find. This one happens to be Peacock Blue with the Deco Art. So let's just do a little drop here. This one, this is called Desert Turquoise with Americana, and I'm going to put just a drop of that in. And if I mix the two together, I'm going to see what I get. Oh, look at that. That's pretty close. That's close enough for me. So I'm going to mix those two together. That's my first color. 
I like to use these little one ounce glass makeup containers. It's got the little lid on the top. So when I'm painting, I don't have to keep unscrewing the lid. That can just pop on to keep some of the air out while I'm painting. And then this can go on to keep it airtight for a future use. So I can keep that color once I've mixed it. So I'm going to mix into my little jars here. You don't have to mix till the whole thing's full, but just mix the amount that you want. So let's start with my peacock blue. And I'll just give that a mix and I'll just keep mixing until I've got the color that I like. And we'll do another test again. Just a little bit too dark, so I'm going to add just a titch more of this. I would say that's close enough. For my purple, the closest I've got is African Violet Decort. And that's coming up very pink. It needs to have a bit of a blue tinge to it. Seeing as I've got my blue here, I'm going to add a little bit of this peacock blue and see if that brings it back to more of a movie, but then ready. A little bit dark. Try for a half and half. So now I've got the right color, but it's too dark. So then I'm going to come in with just a little tiny bit of white. And I've got Deco Art Americana Snow Titanium White. And there we have it. So those are the three colors I will use to get that color. So I'll mix that into my jar. It's still too purple, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue and a bit more of the white. Still need a bit more blue. So adding a little tiny bit more blue, a little bit more white. We are close enough. Now for the pink deco art, I have a wild orchid and this is the closest one I can find and let's see how that looks. It's just a titch dark so I'm going to add just a little bit of white. That was an easy one. And remember when the paint is wet, it will appear darker. Now that it has dried, you can see that it's a really good match. And for my blue, my closest is Tropical Blue Deco Art. And I'm gonna pull in a little bit of this color. It's very close to this one, which is Sea Glass Deco Art Americana. And I'm guessing it's probably going to need some white. And I'm thinking it's going to need just a titch more of this green. Anyways, I think those are the three colors that we need. I'm going to start with my blue, add a bit of the green and the white, and then we've got our shade of blue. And on this blue, I'm not getting it light enough, so I just keep adding more and more white until I'm happy with the color. So that's definitely a shade lighter than that one. And when that dries, I think I'm going to leave it alone. 
And for my last one, I've got Deco Art Americana Sea Glass. Just on the darker side. And I can either use white or I can try adding a little bit of a tan color. I'm going to try some tan this time. This is Fog Gray, actually, by Craft Smart. A little bit dark, so I'm going to come back in with my white. And there we've got it. When that dries, it will be nice and light, close enough to the shade. And the same with this one, I just kept adding more white. Just keep testing, add more white, add more white, test again until you're happy with your shade of paint. And let's do a quick little test of all those colors we've just made together. And we'll just do a few little dots on the black because that's a really good test on what they're going to look like on a black rock. And there's our color palette. What do you think? Here's your basic dotting tools. You've got your acrylic rods from a, a large size down to the smaller size. And you've got your standard dotting tools. They can also be called embossing tools. They can also be called nail art tools, depending on what you see on the internet. Again, very large down to a very tiny one. These can also be called cake decorating tools, but they also work for dots. And then you can get some larger sizes. This one's got uh, the smallest there up into the largest one here. They work the same as these ones. I'll do a little demonstration for you. And the way I like to set this up is I've got a piece of double-sided tape on a black piece of stock cardstock. And it just holds them all in place and it keeps them in order for me. So I'm not looking around going, where's my large one? Where's my small one? And I just have to pick it up and then use them and put it back in place. And one more tool I can show you is these are henna tools. And they have really tiny, tiny little holes, which work perfectly for dotting. They give you four little bottles and... It's got a little stopper so it doesn't dry out. And then you just attach the attachment you want. And the beauty of this method is that you don't have to keep going in with your dotting tool and going dip, dot, dip, dot, dip, dot. This one, you can do it constant. And you can just keep going and going and going and going and going. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute here. Here's the biggest one in the set. And just a dipping into your paint. And the paint I'm using will form a little bit of a dollop after you've dipped it in. You know, that's a good consistency. And this one, when you're putting it on the paper, you're not pushing right down on the paper. You're just until it's touching and then you lift off. If you don't want this really large dome in the middle, you can take one of your other smaller tools and just smooth it out a bit. That's what I tend to like to do. I don't want that great big dollop in the middle. And this is the smallest one in the set. Same thing. These tools are good for if you want to do a series of smaller dots. Then you can go and you can individually keep going in and dipping as you go to make the same size dot. Or if you want to walk the dots, then of course you start on the top and you walk it down and every time you dip again, it will get smaller and smaller for walking the dots. And the acrylic rods, you're going to want to hold those directly upright to get your perfect dot. And every time I've 
done a dot, if I'm not doing that one again, then right away I take it and I wipe it off with a wet one and keeps them nice and clean. And with these tools, you can hold them more like a pencil or a pen and it doesn't have to be directly up and down. You can just use it like a pen or pencil. It's very comfortable. Here's these ones. This one I would only dip halfway up the ball. And you can see how this one works. And I will do a walking dot with this one as well. This one is harder to judge because you can't really see where you're dotting because this is getting in the way. But if you want some larger dotting tools to make walking dots, then that is certainly possible. And here's the smaller end on that one. And I wanted to show you these little henna bottle tools. Once you've got your paint in here and it's come down, it will automatically come out of the hole almost on its own. You don't have to squish the bottle. And without squishing, I've already got paint coming out. You can see here, I can just keep going and going and going for as long as I want. And you can control the amount and the size of the dot. So if you want a larger dot, then you can squeeze on the, the tube slightly. And you can see how much bigger that dot has got. I've squeezed more. Just keep squeezing. And you can get a larger dot. And then if you're back to the small ones again, then away you go. It's a lot faster if you've got a lot of little dots to do. So I really wanted to show you those because it will really make your dotting go a lot faster. But you've got to be a little bit more in control of it. If you are going to use these ones, make sure as soon as you've finished using it to take it off. Put on your stopper to keep your paint from drying out. And then take this to the sink and you can use like a sewing needle or anything and wash that out right away so it doesn't get clogged so you can use that for many more times. You can just freehand your dots by creating your center dot and then going top, bottom, right and left and in between and then working out from there if you're not comfortable with that then you can make guidelines on your rocks like so. Now the Happy Dotting Company, in my first video I showed you for making these stones, they also supply you with a guide and they're lovely because they're domed so it fits over the rock really nicely. But you can also get guides like this off the internet, but you just have to be a little bit more careful when you're placing them on because they're not bending down like the domed one that we just showed you. So finding that middle dot, because there's always a middle dot in happy dotting stones. And then you just have to kind of bring your sides down, do those first, and then hold down these sides, and then do your middle. And pencils you can use. You can use a watercolor pencil. You can use a water erasable pencil, you can use um, chalk pencils, whatever will form a line onto your stone. I find it's best just to bend down these front and back ones first. Now let's get those ones in. Being careful not to move that alignment. Now come over and push down these sides because if you don't get it quite right, your lines are going to be off and then it's really pointless on doing this in the first place. So just be careful not to lose your placement and then come in and let's do these ones. Okay, we've done up and down, left and right, and now we're going to go this way. Again, really try to 
push it down evenly as possible. If you're doing a tea light, you can still use these, but what you'll have to do is just press down into the center. And then once you're happy with your alignment, keep your finger down in the middle there and go around and draw in your pattern. The other thing I was going to mention, if you've got a small Lazy Susan, by all means, you can use it. I don't have a little one. I've only got a great big one that's too bulky. So I've just got a piece of cardstock here. I've bent up my little corners, and then I can just grab those, and I can turn it around as I'm working on my rock. It's my makeshift Lazy Susan. It's a Lazy Patty. <laughs> there are a ton of dot painting tutorials on YouTube. So I'm not going to go into great detail on the dot painting, but just follow along and you will get the idea just from watching. And this first one that I dip, obviously I'm going to try to center it. And the tool you use, your dot's going to be slightly bigger than your tool. And I just like to dot up and down. I'm not touching the stone, I'm just dotting the paint. And this one was not perfect, but I will show you how I can fix that later. And like I showed you before, I don't like that great big mound. It's okay on the little dots to make them look like pearls, but on the center one I like to smooth it out. For my rounded dots, I'm going to try to get close to that mid middle circle without touching it. Some of these lines might not be perfect either, so I'm going to make sure I'm going between these two lines and not following this one, otherwise I would be off. Using the same size tool, I'm going to do my next row and try to get as close as I can, read in between the previous row. With my smallest acrylic rod, I'm going to come in between those blue dots. And as you can see, these guidelines are not helping me at all because I'm already off. So I'm going to work more on watching my dots than I am these lines. Again, same size rod. And in with my pink in between my purples. I just realized I wasn't filming that last section, so I had gone around and I did my dots. I'll try to try show you again. Walking the dots here, do 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 do. Hit this one again, and then go down. I'm sorry, but that didn't film. Disappointing, but I hope that makes sense for you. I'm just going to sort of try to tell you again. Dotting here, walk it down, redip, dot again on the top, and then down. Sorry about that.
Once all your first layer is dry, you can come in and start doing your accent dots. So let's do another one on top of this one. I haven't used much of my one blue color here. I was leaving that to do my top accent dots. So I'm going to go around and do all my accents with my blue. So I'm going to carry on and everywhere there's a dot, I'm going to fill it in with my blue. And using a smaller tool to dot little dots into those little dots. And I also need to join these ends right here. So I'm going to come in with a blue dot to cover up those little ends right there. And still looking for little fill-ins. Right here, I'm seeing that I want to finish off this. So I'm gonna to try to go around and make smaller dots to complete those. So I'm going to start in the middle here where I've got the largest space and then I'll come back out. And in here I've got to have some fill in so I'm going to come back in here. And as well on the other side. And a smaller tool for the little pink dots in between the larger pink dots. Right there. When you're finished your dot painting, just come in with a, a wet wipe and remove all those lines and little guidelines. Now you can come in with your very small dotting tool and you can fix any of those little areas that you messed up on. And I've got this little mess up in here, so we're just going to smooth that out a little bit. And let that dry again, and then we're ready to put our top protective coating on. I use the faux cart outdoor satin varnish for my sealer. You can just pour some directly right on the top and then come in with your brush and brush it on. And it uh, really will make your artwork pop. If you've put on a fairly thick coat, one coat is plenty with this particular sealer. And the beauty of these little makeup containers that I got for my paint, they came in this cute little box. So I can just pop them back in here. And I have all my paints listed here on how I made each of these colors. I can just tape that onto this box and it's all ready to use for my next project. This is a great example of when you want to make a lot of small dots on a particular design. I've put in a smaller nozzle. I guess that's the proper word for that. And I need to squeeze out just slightly on the bottle this time and I will come down in here and we'll make a whole bunch of dots all at the same time without having to just keep dipping all the time. And I've put the uh, rod under here just so I can get down to the underside. So there's a really good application for using 
this tool. I'm going to go around and do the whole thing and I will show you what it looks like when it's finished. And here it is. And it didn't take me that long because I used the henna dotting tool. And this time I'm going to use the Mink Wax Full Acrylic Protective Finish Clear Gloss. On the first video where I showed how to make the stones, I also showed how to make sure that you sign your work first and then you seal your bottom, you let that dry, and then you're ready to paint your top and then all you have to do is seal your top and your bottom is ready to go. I have also made up some colors of the forest blues and greens paint palette and I've done one two three four five of them and I'm going to paint this tea light in this color palette I won't be filming how I do the actual painting because the video is already long enough but I'll show you the end result on another color scheme just to give you some more ideas